Yeah. It says now alive. Okay. But my music disappeared. Well, now I can't get my screen back, so I have no idea what's going on. That's very good. Yep, sorry, I never did. Well, then I'm going to shut down because I don't know. Oh, no. Apparently, I'm live. Yeah. Good morning, folks. I can't get my music. My computer's being really weird. I have no idea. Do you have Google on? I do. There is sunshine. It's a beautiful. I don't know if I can see out the window. You're just going to get a glare. But it's a beautiful day out. So I'm here without music. You see me. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm tired. Yeah, I did not sleep last night. I think I got two hours of interrupted sleep somewhere. And my screen just disappeared again. Pretty sure I'm live, but my screen disappeared. I can't see me. <laughs> he was looking at his phone. It says I'm connected, but... Okay, can you just tell me if I'm still talking oh, to people? Oh, sure. <laughs> I think I am, but my screen disappeared. It's been really wonky this morning. Right. There, I'm back again. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Um, Sorry, I'm late this morning because I just, I didn't sleep. So he brought me coffee at like 7.30 and I kind of gave him the stink eye and said, You grumbled. Huh? Grumbled. I grumbled. I mumbled. It's because he didn't bring me my coffee cup that has the markings on it that says, shh. And then it says almost. And then it says you may talk now by the time I get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get to the bottom before you're allowed to talk to me. Okay, so uh, real quick, I just wanted to talk about, and it's frozen, but we'll just pretend that it's going. Um, I, I wanted to talk about uh, sensible dosing with things. Um, when I, I'm getting records from people using a, adult human medications and vitamins for small pets, dogs, cats, whatever. Um, and if you use common sense, if something says that it's a vitamin supplement for a 150 pound woman or a 200 pound man, um, if you have a 10 pound cat or dog, it wouldn't make sense to give them the same dose that you would give a 150 pound woman or a 200 pound man. You're frozen, but evidently you're I'm frozen, still. but my voice isn't. Okay. Uh, so uh, and I've talked about this before as far as giving over-the-counter medications to our pets. Um, cats are extremely sensitive. They don't have the liver enzymes to process medications the same way that dogs do. So very sensitive to things like Tylenol or, uh, yeah, at least it froze with a good face instead of one of my ugly faces. Uh, <laughs> So Tylenol is toxic in cats. One regular oh, now I'm talking again. One regular strength Tylenol is enough to kill your cat. So you definitely don't want to go there. Um, aspirin, one regular strength aspirin will kill your cat or has the potential to kill your cat. If we dose cats with aspirin, which we rarely do because we have so much so many better medications now, but we used to use aspirin in kitty cats that uh, were prone to clotting or had pain, but it was one 81 milligram aspirin twice a week this is the maximum dose for a cat. Uh, I don't like to use aspirin in dogs. There's actually dog aspirin that you can buy over the counter. Uh, but something like 80% of dogs that are given aspirin, if you uh, do endoscopy and look at their stomach lining, they have microbleeds in there. Um, I think the same probably holds true for people. It, aspirin is pretty hard on the stomach, particularly at uh, higher doses. Um, ibuprofen can be very toxic for our pets, it can cause GI bleeds that can be fatal, uh, kidney failure. Um, but even something simple like a multivitamin, People are not built the same as dogs and cats, and 
uh, use common sense. And what I see quite often is people choosing not just one, but choosing three or four. And the same with probiotics. You need one good one, one, one good product. You don't need to be loading on five and six different probiotic products. It's not going to make things better. Uh, so difficult to read the comments because of the light from the door behind. It's a window, actually. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> I don't have a good setup here. It's just this is my microphone. Boom. Let's see if I can get that. Maybe it can help block that light. I don't know. I don't. It's just it's a mess. We don't have a good setup here. Um, it did. Okay. Um, and it's automatically generating the the words across the bottom. That's not me. Um, so, uh, so what I'm asking is that you use common sense and definitely check with your veterinarian before you start pulling things out of your medicine cabinet to give to your pets. Um, some of those things that are in your medicine cabinet that are just fine for you are really toxic for your pets and really dangerous for your pets. Um, so even uh, write another book with more stories with more details, chapter, don't give dogs, cats, people medicine. Oh, I've had some good stories um, about people doing stupid things. I had a fourth year med student give his girlfriend's cat two extra strength Tylenol, killed the cat. I just looked at him and said, why would you think that a 10 pound animal who's sick needs two extra strength adult Tylenol? And I just said, let me know where you go practice because you have no common sense and I'm going to recommend that people not use you as their doctor. So yeah, homeopathy for dummies. I don't do homeopathy. But <laughs> How not to kill your animals. You know, and the problem with this guy uh, who killed his girlfriend's cat is you know, he's in med school. They didn't have any money. So they didn't want to spend money to take the cat to the vet to get it diagnosed to figure out what it even had. Um, and he just decided to medicate it because it wasn't feeling well, except that he killed it. Seen it a lot. I had another client who had a golden retriever, beautiful dog, and the dog had some arthritis. So he decided he was going to give it ibuprofen and he gave it 400 milligrams of ibuprofen three times a day for a week. And when the dog was flat out at the end of the week, he brought it in and this dog was hemorrhaging everywhere in kidney failure. We hospitalized it in ICU for a week. It died. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Um, new to your page, direct me to your feedback on PEA for my dog that I want to take off Apoquil. So um, how do I feel about Pepsid for stomach issues? Short term, it's okay, but long term, you, you've got to solve the underlying problem. That's just putting a Band-Aid on the symptoms. Um, the PEA is a, a natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's great stuff. It's worked for a lot of uh, the animals. Um, particularly the arthritic animals, it's really helping. The other thing in the store is the beta cetosterol, which is the plant sterols, um, sort of a natural form of a steroid that doesn't have the side effects uh, and long-term effects of um, synthetic steroids. So Jacqueline, that would be something else to look at, maybe adding the beta cetosterol. Also the great windkeeper. If you go to the uh, website, drjudymorgan.com, and at the top, click on the shop button. Uh, it, it brings down categories and just click on the one that says allergies. And then there's a whole bunch of products that we recommend for allergy prone animals that are listed in that section. There's a section for kidney disease. There's a section for arthritis. Um, Gwen and Brandon did a good job of organizing things. So, um, Slippery Elm is good for upset stomachs, but again, it's really not something that we want to use every single day. It is, um, a, it is a yin tonic and it is very yin. So uh, you can make things actually too wet. Uh, you were informed children's Benadryl was safe. Well, if it has xylitol in it, it is not safe. Um, pets can take Benadryl at one milligram per pound of body weight up to every eight hours. Again, not something they should be living on. Um, I only recommend it for my patients if they have an anaphylactic reaction, like they get a bee sting or a spider bite, they swell up and uh, we wanna give them something um, to, to try to stop the reaction from occurring. But again, not something 
that you want to use right away. How long does it take for the great wing keeper to work? When we're using herbal therapies, it can take a couple of weeks to see the effect that we want. Some animals will respond within a few days, but I generally say give it two to three weeks to see the maximum effect that you're going to get. So, okay, I'm way behind schedule this morning, so I'm going to get going. I will post something for supporters. I think we're probably, it's Wednesday, so I think we'll probably do Friday night, um, kind of our usual Friday thing. <clears throat> so this person, Julie says, Great Wind Keeper has been great for Maggie, really helped, took about a month, but when I ran out and was waiting for it to riot, the salt was working, yeah. A lot of times that's how you know something's working, when you stop giving it and the symptoms get worse, you go, ooh, maybe that was doing something. Okay, since I can't get music, I don't know what my computer's doing today. Everybody have a wonderful day and uh, stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Hopefully the computer will work better. <laughs>